<laughs> what up, YouTube? Dudes, what's going on, y'all? Man, all right. I've had the camera now. The G100. The Lumix G100. I've had it for about six months now. Yeah, that's right. Six months. I've been putting it through the test, using it. And I gotta tell you the truth, it's not that bad of a camera, man. Don't let all these haters uh, tell you that it's bad because let me tell you, it's not as bad as the all them people been trying to say. And let me tell you this, half those people talking shit on the internet about the G100 never actually even used it. I mean, just like all the full frame haters, like all them people out there talking trash about Micro Four Thirds, most of them never even used it, so it's like, you know, take it with a grain of salt, do your research, uh, and you know, you'll find out that actually this camera isn't as bad as people say. But it's not perfect though. I've used it for six months and I'm gonna tell you there are times when I've been very annoyed with this camera. And there's times I've been very happy with it. Why don't we talk about it a little bit? Now I got some things I like and I got some things that I don't like. Why don't we talk about some of the things that I don't like first? You know, cause I don't like giving bad news after good news. First of all, there's a 30 minute time limit when you're recording in full HD. That sucks. There shouldn't be no time limit on any camera as far as I'm concerned. Even if it is technically an entry level camera. That's what this is. I mean, they say it's a vlogging camera and I don't really agree with that. I call it more like an entry level carry around everywhere you go camera. You know? A 10 minute time limit in 4K. That's, that's not cool, man. I mean, Honestly, for the most part, I don't do videos for more than 30 minutes, but I do actually have a few times been doing things over 30 minutes on this and it just cut off. And just so you know, right now I'm filming on the GH5 in autofocus, single point. Let's see how it works this whole video. All right, so there's that. You know, uh, I don't really shoot 4K more than just a clip that I sell the shutter stock here and there. So I don't really just shoot whole videos in 4K right now. Uh, I just don't like, I just don't like using all the space, you know. So yeah, it doesn't really bother me about the 4K 10 minute limit. But the 30 minute limit, I don't like that for full HD. I think it's lame. I think any camera nowadays shouldn't even have it. Second, and this is the biggest and most annoying of all the things they could have did wrong with this camera is that they didn't put IBIS in the body. Like, electrical IBIS is garbage, man. Like, why are you gonna, look, I just sold my GX85, but I had that, it was pretty much the same size, a little bit heavier than this, and it had IBIS, good IBIS. They could've just put that IBIS in here. I don't need it to be this light. Honestly, I would've preferred IBIS, and I would've sacrificed the lightness for IBIS. That's just my personal preference. I'm very, I don't even understand why they did that. Like, they're known to have their, their good uh, IBIS, man. That's like what they do. That's like one of the benefits of me is why I stick with Michael Four Thirds is because of their uh, uh, IBIS. And not to put it in here, it kind of really crippled the camera in my way. Even though, I will say that the electric uh, IBIS, the, uh, the electrical stabilization in this camera is actually pretty decent. I mean, it's garbage that they didn't give us IBIS, but the electrical stabilization is not quite garbage. It's actually okay. I, I get pretty decent. I can get some pretty decent handheld shots. I'll show some so you guys can see what I'm talking about. But yeah, it's not garbage. It's, it's just they should have gave us IBIS. I really don't like the fact that they did not give us IBIS. Lumix, Panasonic, if you're watching, <laughs> come on, bro. Do something about this next time when you if you guys decide to do another camera like this do not uh take out the iris another thing i do not like about this camera is it's crop city in this camera like they found a way to crop every single thing pretty much <laughs> i'm exaggerating they didn't crop every single thing but they cropped a lot of stuff man they crippled this camera in like ways really kind of like i don't understand they kind of like um they kind of uh, advertised it as a 4K vlogging camera, and it's really not that. 
they gave it like a stupid crop on 4K, even when you don't have stabilization on. That's another thing I don't like. Even when you use the electric stabilization, it made, it does a serious crop on the standard mode, it crops in, and then you can put it on high mode, that crops in. And then when you cropped in that high on high mode, with 4K, cropped in even more, it's, it becomes pretty, it becomes pretty waste of time to use 4K. I just usually stuck to uh, full HD, but I do shoot 4K, and the 4K does look good. The 4K image is a good image. We'll talk about that later. So yeah, um, what was that thing? Yeah, they cropped a whole lot of stuff in here, man. Uh, so you get a crop when you put it in 4K. You get a crop when you use the stabilization. A bigger stable. If you use the high, you get a bigger crop. Uh, Crops if you put it in 4K burst. Just a major crop, like two times or something almost on that one. A major crop, a big difference when you crop, <laughs> a big, big crop uh, when you uh, put it in 4K burst also. So, you know, you gotta, you gotta just deal with that, man. There's a lot of cropping going on in some of the stuff you use. Um, it can be annoying at times. That's why I say I don't like it. It's one of the things I don't like. Know that before you buy it, there are certain things going on where they crop a lot of things on here. 4K burst for sure. 4K uh, crop when you uh, you uh, use the uh, image stabilization, and you're gonna want to use it because who wants shaky footage? So that's annoying. You know, really annoying. Uh, the autofocus is not great in this camera. Um, it's not. <coughs> It's not garbage, though. You know what I'm saying? It's really not. It's not crap. It's just not good. Like, in good light, the face tracking will hold your face. And in good light, yeah, in good light, the face tracking will hold you. Like, in light like this, like right now, like in my little setup right here, uh, the, it will hold my face. But it will not do it in, it, it will... You drop the light at all, even in like, just, if I took the lights away and I just had like my room light, no, no. It's not going to hold your face in that. As a matter of fact, let me just show you guys what I'm talking about. Alright, now, <clears throat> it is on face tracking, uh, kit lens, and I got my regular lights on, and the face tracking will hold my face in this light. It will do that, no problem. You understand? But it will. Yeah, see it? Yeah, look at that. So, like I'm saying, like if you want to use this to do just what I'm doing now, talking head video, uh, just talking to people, and you want to put it on face tracking, and you're not going to be moving around too much, this will hold your face in your studio light room. If you have a lit room with lights on you. You can trust that the face tracking will hold your face. And that's pretty good for a uh, Panasonic right now. I mean, I just have to think that they're going to eventually switch the face detection in the newer stuff. I mean, they have to. Otherwise, you know. But that's a whole other conversation. Yeah, see? So, but watch this, though. Mm -hmm. Is it holding me? Huh? It's still kind of holy, huh? Nice, nice. Okay, watch this day. No way. It's still holy. Alright guys, see, it's actually doing pretty good. <laughs> okay. It's not great though outside. <sighs> Man, look at that GH5 autofocus. It's holding. It's holding that single point. It's holding strong. Um, yeah, man. So yeah. There's a few things that there's nothing to like about this. 
still it has one card slot, you know. Um, and you know, that's a little bit annoying too, but who cares, right? I mean, it's an entry level camera. I've seen this online used for like 400 bucks with the kit lens. That's pretty cheap, man. And it's totally worth that price. All right, so that's the stuff I really don't like. Let's talk about the stuff that I do like. For one thing, it has a cool slow motion knob. So when I want to do uh, 120 uh, frames per second to get some of that smooth slow mo, all I gotta do, autofocus, go. Go, autofocus, go. Go, autofocus. Come on, you piece of shit. Autofocus. There you go. There you go, you piece of crap. There you go. See that? <laughs> Hit that button there. Boom. Simple as hell. Now go back. There we go. And then you get, boom. Then it gives you the options. You can do two times faster. You can go two times slower. You can go four times faster, four times slower. So you can do uh, an awesome um, uh, fast, you know, whatever they call it when you walk through uh, the crowds and see everything super fast motion as you're walking or driving. You can do that pretty easily, especially with the iris going. Actually, no, that's another thing. When you're using the slow motion, the iris doesn't work. Only the in-camera stabilization works. But it does work when... It does work pretty good. I'll show you some of that. Boom. I've used it a few times and it's actually pretty cool. And it's pretty cool just to hit that little knob. You know what I mean? Boom. Hit that knob real quick. Boom. Slow mo mode. I like that. That's pretty convenient. I like it. I hope maybe they add that to some new camera models. I like that. Just hitting that little switch. Get there real quick. I don't know. Maybe you guys won't like it. I actually think it's pretty convenient to have that there. All right. The image quality from videos on this camera is actually pretty great. Uh, it does a decent image, and I'm an amateur, so I don't know. I'm just telling you my opinion. Decent, very good looking image comes from this camera, man. I really like the way it looks. Um, and that's a good plus, man. And it's so small. So small. Look how small this thing is. Look at this. Come on, auto. Auto focus, go. There we go. See that? Look how small it is. Uh, uh, look at that. It's just a little baby little camera. Look at the cute little thing. Yeah, super small. Tiny. You know? Come on. There you go. Come on, GH5. Show these guys that your autofocus works when it wants to. And look, you got the cool flipper out screen. Look at that, man. Every new camera has to have the flipper out screen. I honestly just started doing video stuff and I'm learning video now, so I can really appreciate the flip out screen. Before, when I, because I'm a photographer, that's what I do. Um, I, I, I actually kind of like the, uh, up, the up screen more. Just, I don't know why. But just now that I'm doing video a lot, just playing around with video and stuff a lot more um I'm, I'm i'm enjoying the flip out screen so that's a plus now flip out screen is awesome and yeah like i was saying the small size of this camera is also a major plus i really like the fact that this camera is so small like i can take this camera in somewhere put it in my pocket and i will know that i can always keep this camera a 20 millimeter uh the 20 millimeter lens uh, I take that with me, this lens, the kit lens, I take, you know, my little mini tripod, and I got a pretty good little kit that, you know, probably probably take like one of the uh, kit lens at the telephoto or something. I don't know, and I have a pretty decent kit that can pretty much take care of everything I want to know with this. And let me tell you another thing. This camera, the pictures that it takes, just with this kit lens alone, is pretty good, man. I'm um, actually, let me show you some of those as a matter of fact also. Now, just with the kit lens, you can take some pretty good shots if you know what you're doing. Look at it. Yeah.
Yeah, so this camera is pretty inconspicuous, man. I can put this in my pocket, take it out. No one really even looks at you, man, when you got this. I can point this around, and people most of the time when they first see it, they're gonna think it's a point and shoot or a fixed lens camera. They're not even gonna really be thinking it's no, you know, threat to them, you know, because it's just so small, you know? Yeah, uh, look at me. I ain't nobody, I just got my little tiny camera, you know? So yeah, that's another thing I like about this camera, man. Um, yeah, that's pretty much a lot of the reasons why I like this, man. I really, uh, I just, just like the small size. The video it takes is great. Uh, the video it takes is awesome. The pictures are awesome. Put it in your pocket. You always got a nice camera. Put it in your pocket, your purse, whatever it is you're doing. <laughs> and you got you a camera that you can take everywhere with you. Now, I'm not saying that this is the camera that you probably gonna wanna buy. Like, if you got... If you got lenses for Panasonic or Olympus already, if you got those, then yeah, you might want to just snatch this up. Just for a backup camera to walk around, I would definitely recommend it. It's a great camera. But if you don't and you're, and you're looking for a little vlogging camera and you really want one, I wouldn't call this the vlogging camera. So I would not recommend this for a vlogging camera. I would recommend this if you just want a camera to put in your pocket and walk around. It takes great pictures, great video. The image stabilization in the camera, when you turn it on, there's a major crop, which is why you really can't use it for vlogging, man. I wouldn't myself. You can, though. You can. It just isn't as good as a lot of the other options they have out there. That new Sony uh, ZV-E10999, whatever the numbers is. Not the ZV-1, but the newest one. Uh, the videos that people are putting out with that camera look pretty good. And if you don't got no... Um, if you don't got no camera at all and you just want to get a camera to take some video and some pictures with and you really want to do vlogging, I can't with good conscience tell you to go get this one. You know, I would want to because I am a Panasonic fanboy. I love all things Panasonic. I would love to say, hey, go get this because that's what I like to do. I like to recommend Micro Four Thirds cameras to people. And I would love to say, go get this one to vlog with. But I cannot do that because the crop sucks. All that stuff makes it, it makes it just not really a good vlogging camera. But it is a great, great all around camera and if you want to if you want to do some vlogging every now and then with it you can do it you just there's just better things out there to do it with you know spend 200 more dollars 300 more go get the em1 too like i just did <sighs> boom i just went and picked this up from somebody on the internet for 650 dollars american uh, it came with the battery grip where are they? I don't know where it is. I gotta find it. I don't really use that. I, I tried using it. it I don't know. I eat the mirrorless cameras because they're small. I don't want to put the big ass grip on there and make it extra big. So I don't put the grip on. I just got this cool little leather thing. It looks more fancy if you have me, right? Okay. Huh? There we go. Come on, autofocus, you piece of junk. Uh. No, I said do it. Yeah, this is the Olympus EM1 Mark II. And this is a great camera. You can, I just bought this. I have not played with it long enough to tell you guys a good... Uh, I didn't give you guys a, uh, how I feel about it yet, really, because I haven't used it enough. I just got it. I've only had it like a week. But so far, this is a great camera. And for 200 300 I got this for $650. I've seen these on the internet for $400. $250 more, $300, $350 more if you don't find as good a deal as I am. You can get one of these. And that is a great deal. Great autofocus. Great autofocus. Trustworthy autofocus. Uh, and great pictures, uh, picture quality, video quality. It's a great camera all around. I'm a, I'll give more of a review later on it. I can't really say too much. The GH5 autofocus is holding though. I mean, it's kind of, it ain't quick or anything on certain things, but it's working though, right? Come on, man. <laughs> mm -hmm.
Yeah, it's probably the lens too. The twenty millimeter uh, lens ain't that great of a focusing lens either. So I don't know. All right, so man, what do y'all think though, man? Have you played with this yet? And if you have, what do you think about it, man? I honestly think it's a pretty decent camera, man. You know, all around good, good camera, solid camera. Got some things that kind of suck about it, but if you can get past those few things like I have, I've decided to keep this camera. This is gonna be my third camera. It's not going nowhere. I'm gonna keep it in the house because it's an amazing camera. Amazing. It's not, <laughs> I don't know if I should use the word amazing camera. It is a great camera. It's a good camera, solid camera. That's what I say. You should definitely buy it if you're looking for it. If, you are, if you're looking at getting this camera, if you are thinking about buying it, you're looking at it, you've been thinking about it, I say go ahead and pull the trigger. Uh, you probably won't. You probably won't regret it, man. It's a good camera.